In this morning's investor talk, you were talking about how optometrists are going to have to evolve with the new types of technology coming out in the market. Let's start by talking about how, how diagnose is going to change the way, you know, people have their eyes checked. So as you know, artificial intelligence is being available now from a commercial perspective, uh, and it's specifically hitting anything that has to do with medical imaging. These optometrists really are doing imaging every day uh, from morning to night. And where the change will happen is where the, the role of the optometrist in the future, uh, going from uh, giving you a prescription for your eyewear to a, a lot more sophisticated uh, review or monitoring of diseases such as diabetes, hypertension, glaucoma, uh, AMD. And the optometrist's role will change uh, due to uh, the fact that the uh, refraction equipment will probably disappear in the next two or three years. So you, when you sit in front of your uh, your optometrist, he, he, he probably won't do this refraction. So this is the equipment that actually brings the lenses vis-a-vis -vis your eyes and give you a pre prescription at the end. And so they will be using their time that's uh, in a much better way, I believe, in terms of medical um, perspective of the uh, eye, so really I not eye care, but you know, really eye health. <clears throat> if you have diabetes, well, you need to have your eyes checked on a yearly basis. If you suffer from hypertension, it'll be the same thing. And same thing if you have cardiovascular issues, the same thing, uh, glaucoma. So I think that the future of optometry is, is very good in terms of getting closer to the medical field, interacting with specialists and doctors, and being at the same level as them. That's what I perceive is going to happen in the next uh, four or five years. And of course, Diagnose has been at the forefront of AI technology for eyes since you conceived of this company. Can you tell right. us? We've been, we've been in, uh, in, uh, in uh, trying to monitor the eye or the back of the eye, the retina, for the last seven years. So it took a, a while for uh, for us to gather the data that we needed to actually uh, do a good prediction in terms of disease on the retina. Uh, we did uh, we gathered our data in 14 countries, a little bit more, a little bit less than 400,000 patients, so 800,000 eyes, if you want. Uh, then you have to uh, triage those uh, by diseases. Uh, and so we spent the first uh, four years gathering the data on this. In the next three years, but you know, there's something called COVID that really hit us and slowed down everything for a couple of years. But it gave us the perspective to go from the uh, from government um, projects with hospitals to uh, optometry. So we had the chance to actually uh, build a new market by, with that. But we've been in it now for seven years. And uh, I believe we know what we're doing. Uh, we can see the future. When Essilor decided to pick Diagnose as a company to work with, they were really looking not just at what we had today, but what we had planned for the future. So our, fu our future plans include all other diseases that we can do uh, with the eyes, but it doesn't stop there. We could do lungs, we could do, uh, uh, we could do brain, we can do all kinds of other things if we have the, uh, the data to analyze. And so uh, our future looks good. I was reviewing your news releases this morning. And uh, you're currently working to obtain a Health Canada and U.S. FDA approval for four additional AI analysis modules. And you'll be, your plans are to commercialize these by Q3 of this year, is that correct? That's correct. So these four tests are very important. You need to understand um, my competitors and I, we've been focusing on diabetes. And so it's something called um, uh, diabetic retinopathy. And what we notice is that uh, if you work outside of the medical field, the diabetes field, all these diseases can also affect any uh, uh, adult uh, person uh, that doesn't have uh, diabetes. So we decided to actually um, uh, build four new products, four new tests for other disease that we can see in the retina. So this will actually multiply by four our revenue potential in the future. And it's going to be an, a last one, number six, uh, for uh, glaucoma by the end of the year. 
But these ones we're doing right now, we're in the process of uh, being re recertified on our ISO. Uh, very important. It will include all the new regulatory requirements on AI. Now, these regulatory requirements, uh, there, uh, there's two kinds of it. One is really regenerative, regenerative AI, so chat GPT and those things. We don't use those things, okay? We use really traditional AI uh, for me medical imaging. Uh, that's not covered. So they have a set of requirements that are different from the chat GPT world, if you want. So we are recertifying our ISO and we will be uh, going to uh, uh, get our Health Canada and FDA approvals on these four new products. And of course, your existing product, you have an amazing uh, partnership with a multi-billion dollar corporation. For those of you out there who may be new to diagnose, can you give us an update on how your sales are going? Well, sales are, are going to start only in June with uh, SLR Luxottica. So right now, we're, uh, we've signed the agreement uh, late December, early January. We are working with their uh, accounting de uh, department. Uh, we need to integrate our pricing and our codes inside their um, ordering system. Uh, we're working with our marketing people. Uh, and in the next few weeks, we'll be uh, training the salespeople in Canada. And uh, they have 130 salespeople that we're going to be uh, training on our technology. And they will be our distributors, our sellers of our solution across Canada. And of course, I'm certain, Andre, many people out there are going, how does a small cap like Diagnose make a deal with such a, a an incredibly large corporation? Well, <clears throat> it's a very good question, but it's a, it's been a, a very long term uh, sales campaign. It's about five years. So we started before COVID. COVID really slowed down everything, and then we continued. Uh, but the requirements that um, SLR were looking for is not <clears throat> only uh, what we have today. It's really what we have, uh, what we're working on the future, like I said. So future um, test uh, products that we're working on were a very big key decision factor for SLR. And also our commitment to, you know, these standards like ISO, uh, 13485, ISO 27000 for cybersecurity, and also Health Canada, FDA. These were all part of a big, big uh, uh, requirement set. And uh, we came in number one. And of course, the cybersecurity certification that you just referenced is going to make you exceedingly competitive for such a small, such a small size company as yours. I mean, these are substantial feats. Can you give us an update on this? Well, we are past our our phase one, so phase one uh, there's only there's phase one and phase two. So phase one is really uh, the auditors come in, they look at what we've done. Uh, we are changing all our processes, and uh, they're very critical. So phase one is is very difficult. So we just passed it with uh, flying colors. On the twenty seven thousand uh, ISO twenty seven thousand, well, you get a you get audited uh, remotely. So SLR has actually done a, a first audit before we started this process. And from a cybersecurity, uh, we had failed uh, in one area, patch management. So when you have a software, you, sometimes there's bugs and then you patch it. So we actually uh, have, uh, you know, uh, bought a new software. We readapted the software to our, uh, to our, uh, our environment. And we actually, um, they actually did another test, another audit last week. And we went from having an F for failing to A. So A means the best. So we're going to continue our uh, our processes to get our certification on the twenty seven thousand uh, ISO, and but we will get thirteen uh, four eighty five uh, in uh, probably in June. And with that thirteen four eighty five, you get to go and ask permission to Health Canada and FDA to roll out our product. I personally am always impressed by management when management attracts extraordinary individuals. And this new board member, I think people will benefit from reading Mr. Kulard's background. Would you mind providing us with a little bit of an update on how you got him to join your board, quite frankly, Andre? This is a very impressive uh, professional. Well, actually, I've known uh, Philippe Couillard for a long time. Uh, when he left uh, the public life, 
uh, he was working at a uh, at one of our uh, shareholders uh, company and uh, that's where I met him so we spent we probably had 50 meetings together and uh, at one point I asked him if he wanted to join our board and he said yes but he decided a few weeks after to uh, go back in politics and he became premier of Quebec but the background of, of Philippe is really he is a neurosurgeon he understands very well what we do in terms of impact on the, on the medical system. He understands that wellness programs are very, very important to save money to the government. Uh, he also uh, knows a lot of people worldwide. So he has a, a um, I would say a Rolodex that's much bigger than mine at the, at the government levels. And we we uh, we kept our all our um, our uh, our services ready for the government. For example, the uh, the Quebec RFP to actually screen 1.1 million diabetics in this province over five years. Well, he uh, he will probably be able to help us make sure that we uh, we're going in the right direction and we do all the right things that we need to do to um, to win these deals. Uh, he's also spent four years in Saudi Arabia where we have some. Uh, some business there, but we would like to, you know, solidify a lot better with the government. He has all the contacts there. He's extremely well perceived in Saudi and also in other countries. So for me, I mean, he's going to help us from a medical perspective. He also is going to help us in bringing, uh, hopefully, new uh, opening new doors for new business um, in Canada and in other countries. And thank you very much, uh, Andre. Diagnosis is a publicly traded company on the TSX fee and the OTCQB. Diagnose specializes in early detection of critical health issues using its Flare AI program. For more information, please visit their website. And Andre, thank you again for joining us today. Thank you very much, Tracy.